In this video exercise, we will create common pharmacophore hypotheses from a diverse set of known estrogen receptor ligands as found in the phase tutorial. So let's begin. We'll start by importing the ligands, which in this case is the file erb underscore train. Now, before we open the pharmacophore panel, let's examine the structures in 2D by opening the 2D viewer from the window menu. Simply note the diversity of these ligands and the lack of obvious congeneric series. Next, we'll open the Develop Pharmacophore panel by going to Tasks, Browse, Ligand Based Virtual Screening, and then Develop Pharmacophore Hypothesis. Since we have a collection of multiple ligands, we'll leave the Create Pharmacophore Model Using as set to Multiple Ligands Selected Entries. And we'll make sure that all our ligands are indeed selected in the entry list or project table. If we include some of them, we can also see that these ligands are clearly not aligned. Now we'll note that by default, we consider all ligands to be active, that is until we define any to be considered inactive. But in this example, all ligands are indeed considered active, so we'll leave this as is. There are two methods when dealing with multiple ligands. We covered the process of using prepared ligands to create a consensus model in a previous video. In this example, since our ligands are not aligned, we'll use the find best alignment and common features method. Now we could click run to start the job using the default settings, but let's make a few changes. Let's open the hypothesis settings. Here in the features tab, it shows the options relevant to the selection of features in the common pharmacophore. In this example, we are looking to recognize pharmacophore hypotheses in a diverse ligand set, so we will want to set some non-default options. We'll want to require only a fraction of the active ligands match any given hypothesis, so let's reduce the hypothesis should match at least to 25% of our actives, and we'll want to allow flexibility in the number of features in any given hypothesis, so let's set a wider range for the number of features in the hypothesis to range from 4 to 7. But then we'll set the preferred minimum number of features to 5. So in this case, the pharmacophore perception will start by looking for a 7-point hypothesis. If it can't find any, it'll look for a 6-point hypothesis. Again, if it can't find any, it'll move down, looking for a 5-point hypothesis, and so on. And since we set the preferred minimum number of features to 5, it will keep searching for hypotheses even if it found some seven or six point hypotheses. For all other feature settings, we'll just use the defaults, but as always, you can click the help button to find out more information about a given setting in the panel. Over in the scoring tab, the default scoring function for ranking hypotheses in common pharmacophore perception is phase hypo score. In short, the phase hypo score metric is a linear combination of the survival score and bedrock alpha equals 20 enrichment performance on a small scale virtual screen that is automatically set up and executed by the common pharmacophore perception process. In other words, as part of the scoring procedure, each hypothesis is evaluated in its ability to rank actives against the 1000 compound glide decoy dataset. This glide decoy dataset was created by selecting 1000 ligands from a 1 million compound library that were chosen to exhibit drug like properties. Now notice that if you have your own decoy dataset, you can use them here. Also, if you take a look at the custom scoring function, you have the option to modify the various coefficients of the phase hypo score formula. In this example, we'll keep the scoring set to phase hypo score. In the excluded volumes tab, we have the option to create an excluded volume, but in this example, we'll leave it unchecked. So let's click save. Now, since we'll be generating conformers, We'll keep this option checked on, but in the options dialog, let's enable minimize output conformers. This option requests minimization of generated conformers with the OPLS3 force field. Let's rename the job. Now, since we have quite a few actives and we'll be using the phase hypo score formula, which runs a small scale virtual screen against the Glide decoy dataset, this job can take a few hours on a single CPU or less than an hour if distributed across eight CPUs. Just like all our other Schrodinger applications, the job distribution can be set up via the job settings. Now, you can either click run to start the calculation, or if you're following along using the phase tutorial, 
Go ahead and close the panel, then import the results manually by choosing File, Import Structures, and choose the file ERB underscore common underscore PHYPO. Each hypothesis is shown as a group that contains the hypothesis entry and a subgroup with the aligned active ligand structures. The top ranked hypothesis contains four features, one acceptor, one positive ionic, and two ring features. Now if we double click the hypothesis inclusion icon, we can fix it in place and then open the actives group to superimpose the actives used to create that particular hypothesis and see how they align. Double clicking the blue H button is also a quick shortcut for viewing the hypothesis without having to open the group. A single left or right click on the blue hypothesis H button reveals a few more options specific to the given hypothesis, like hiding the tolerance spheres. While left or right clicking the green hypothesis H button reveals options relevant to all hypotheses, such as determining whether multiple binding modes can be detected from the collection of hypotheses that were generated. Also, since the phase hypo score was used for rank ordering the hypotheses during the pharmacophore perception process, we can use the enrichment viewer to analyze the enrichment performance and gauge how well a given hypothesis did at retrieving the actives against the glide decoy set. Finally, note that right clicking on a feature in the workspace also reveals other options for feature editing. We'll discuss more about these topics in future videos, so stay tuned. Be sure to check out previous videos on creating pharmacophore hypotheses using pre-aligned ligands, while in the next video we'll cover how to find a common pharmacophore hypothesis using a set of known active and inactive ligands in a congeneric series.